What's going on, Creality K1 owners? This is Covenant Custom. Today we're going over the Triangle Labs Dragon Ace Hot End Kit A. This kit is going to come with the heater and thermistor wires. These connectors will not work. We're going to go ahead and take care of that as well in this video. Next up, we've got a policy heat break as per the build of materials. This is necessary because you will be modifying the Creality K1 heatsink to receive this Dragon Ace. These two connectors, JSP2 and 2.54 millimeters, will be the ones that we use to get the wires to work with the print headboard. Here's an additional heatsink that I had purchased. Feel free to use the one that's currently in your printer that will need to be modified in order to receive this kit. An adapter plate, which mates up the Dragon Ace hot end to that modified Creality K1 heatsink. A short length of PPFE tubing. Because I'll be doing this install along with the Booty Call Jones Linear Rail Gantry, I do have that printed carriage here as well. The Dragon Ace carriage will be necessary. Here we have two M3 by 6mm button head screws. These will go through the adapter plate into the bottom of the K1 heat sink. A V6 nozzle adapter that will go into the heater block of the Dragon Ace. A 1564th drill bit that will be used to open up the hole in the center of the Creality K1 heatsink. A 3mm drill bit which will be used to open up the holes in the adapter plate. A set of crimps as we will need to re-terminate the heater and thermistor wires with the JST connectors. A 2mm Allen will be used for the button head screws going through the adapter plate and into the K1 heatsink, as well as a one and a half millimeter Allen for the heat brake grub screw. A wrench for the hot end to snug up the MZE after install. And a three millimeter by half millimeter thread pitch cap for the bottom holes on the heatsink. Let's jump into a quick parts overview with what's in the bags or the box. For that matter we have four zirconia standoffs and two grub screws in case one bounces off gets lost in the carpet if stripped along the way we also have our heat block with the vibrant orange triangle labs heat sock in this next bag we will find the melt zone extender with two socks in case one gets damaged at whatever point now this melt zone extender is going to be assisting in achieving that max volumetric flow near double of what you're receiving out of your current hot end. It does have three ports within it and that maximizes the flow going through it as well as increasing the melt zone. In this next box we will have the V6 nozzle. This is a ZS Plus nozzle, so you are going to be getting that same three port system as in the MZE with this nozzle as well. And this is a reason why going with the V6 adaptation as opposed to the Volcano is worthwhile. You will end up getting 100% of the potential flow through this setup versus about 80% with the Volcano nozzle. In this bag, we do have our V6 adapter, which threads in below the heat break and above the MZE in the heater block. You'll notice that one side does have an Allen port so that you can snug that up into place with the included Allen. We also have the Holoseed heat break which will go into the top portion of the K1 heatsink after we drill out that hole to receive it, with the PPFE tubing cut to size in order to fit between the heat brake and extruder. Now let's move on to my favorite part, which is the install. Here we have the three millimeter drill bit, which is going to be used to open up the holes I've just identified.
we'll then use the 1564th drill bit to bore out the center hole and remove the top collar on the K1 heatsink. Put the two holes on the bottom of the heatsink, use a three millimeter tap, run it perpendicular to that surface, get some good threads and reverse it out so you don't pull them out. Now that we've made the necessary modifications to the heatsink and the adapter plate, we're gonna go ahead and secure that to the bottom of the heatsink with the button head screws, like so. Removing the heater block from the heat sock, we'll be able to expose the clip for the ceramic heater plate. And notice the port for the thermistor to be installed. Moving on to my favorite part of this install, this forum nitride thermal paste is suggested for the ceramic heater plate as well as the lower portion of the heat break. Now you're going to want to be very careful because this stuff is quite tricky to work with. Oops, let's try that again. There's no shot we don't get it this time. Now ever so carefully we are going to get just a small dab on the heater block. That way we can take the ceramic heat plate and mount it directly up to it. And success. I'll take it. And maybe just a dab more. With the correct amount of that boron nitride, we're going to take the ceramic heater plate and place it here with the clip that was removed for the process following. Once you've got that clip back on, it should look something like this. Let's grab our thermistor wire and insert the thermistor into its port. You'll find on the side of the heater block is the threaded port for the grub screw. Let's grab that one more time so that we can take a look at it. We'll install that grub screw and cinch it down. You do not want to over tighten this. And it is going to require a 1.5 millimeter Allen. Let's take a quick look at what we've completed so far. We're about halfway there. Looking good. The heater and thermistor installed on the heater block. Next, we're going to grab the heat break to thread into the top portion of the block. You're going to want to seat this almost flush, leaving about one millimeter distance between the highest most portion of the thread and the top surface of the block itself. And by trying not to repeat our pass, we're going to take the boron nitride and apply a few dabs to the lower portion of the heat break. Within the slice engineering bag, there will be some applicators, aka Q-tips, that you can use to spread it evenly amongst the bottom portion where the heat sink will sit. Take this time while you've got easy access to the four ports on the top of the heater block to insert the zirconia standoffs in each of their correlating positions. This will help you avoid trying to sandwich them in while you've got the heat sink partially installed on the heat break. Ask me how I know. As a matter of fact, let's not say you did. I'll just show you how I struggled through the process. This is when I realized that I missed a step. on the front portion and the thermistor in the rear. Go ahead and align the zirconia standoff with the adapter plate that we installed on the K1 heat sink. Press fit until snug. You can perform a quick wiggle test between both the top and the bottom. Make sure that we're properly seated. At this point, grab the grub screw and secure the heat break from the back portion of the heat sink. Grabbing the adapter for the V6 nozzle, it is worth noting again that unless you choose to go this route, you will be installing the volcano nozzle otherwise. Begin to thread it in so that you've got good contact between both surfaces. Grab your Allen key and seat it all the way against the bottom portion of the heat break that you've just completed install on. Applying light 
pressure to feel the resistance knowing that you've mated the top portion of the adapter against the bottom portion of the heat brake. We can go ahead and grab our heat sock and install it as everything accessible beneath it has been addressed to this point. With the melt zone extender in hand, we're going to position it so the threaded portion goes into the bottom of the heater block. Now you will go ahead and spin this until it's as close to flush as possible, but with the heat brake and the adapter, you will make full thread contact, however there should be a slight gap. With the adapter and MZ installed, make sure that the collar on the heat brake is sitting flush against the heat sink. If it isn't, adjust as is necessary. Time to grab the nozzle. We're gonna go ahead and again take threaded portions, place them towards the bottom of the melt zone extender and spin it in place. These just need to be finger tight as we will do a heat soak and a final tightening once it's in the machine. And as previously discussed, the connectors on the heater and thermistor wires will not work with the print head board, so it's time to take care of that. And with a quick snip at a calculated length, we're ready to re-terminate with JSD connector. Our heater wire measuring 95 millimeters, and our thermistor measuring 70. As for wire routing, you'll take the heater wire, wrapping it around to the rear, Grab the thermistor wire as well and bring them both around to the front. And just like that, the Dragon Ace is ready for the K1. You will need the Booty Call Jones Dragon Ace Specific Linear Rail Carriage. I will detail that in another video. For now, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. We'll see you next time.